Hello, my name is Paul Stewart and I'm currently at Tokyo Haneda Airport. We're about to fly to Sydney with ANA in their 787-9 business class product. Welcome back to what was the final leg of a trip to Turkey, which by the way was very cool and well worth adding to your bucket list. This trip was also a bit of an experiment with Star Alliance Airlines as I usually stick to one world. After an average experience with Lufthansa, I was keen to test out Japan's largest airline, All Nippon Airlines or ANA. In fact, the footage you're seeing now of an ANA 787 is from the top deck of a Lufthansa 747-8, so make sure you check out the review of that and I'll put the link in the video description below. As always, the journey began in ANA's own business class lounge, where I actually had 10 hours to kill. ANA had this very interesting thing going on with Star Wars, and in fact, you may see a few of their 777s and 787s painted in Star Wars liveries. The lounge itself was perfectly comfortable with heaps of seating and a decent selection of food and drinks. Importantly for me, there was also a great view of the apron, and this 747-8 was the actual aircraft I flew into Haneda in. And also, rather importantly, since I had three days of non-stop flying, there were a number of showers available. The lounge made for a perfect place to spend the afternoon watching planes and amusing videos on YouTube. Overall, it was a perfectly sturdy lounge and I really appreciate how quiet and polite everyone is. Now on with the journey. Because it was dark, I didn't get a great view, so I headed on board. Now I usually try and get on board early to do some filming without other passengers, although I got stuck at the gate with a dodgy boarding pass. Business class is split into two cabins with my seat at the back of the forward one. And the seats are all in a one-to-one -one layout, which means everyone gets direct aisle access, which is now the norm in business class. Now the actual window seats alternate between being more private and closer to the windows versus being more open and closer to the aisles. Here's a comparison between the two I shot after we took off. Now I selected this seat because it was more private and I feel like a bit of a dork filming everything and because I figured that it would have a good view of the wing and engine. Now let's go through seat 8K in more detail. In front of you is a touchscreen which works perfectly well and I'll mention that in more detail later. Below that is a decent sized ledge which obviously forms part of the bed. While my bag obstructs the view, it's a good width as some of the new business suites have quite narrow footwells. We'll turn our eyes to the ledge next to you which includes the buttons for the seat adjustment and fold out table. There's a map reading lamp and power plugs well positioned within easy reach. And there's a remote for the lighting and in-flight entertainment. Above there's lights, but unfortunately there's no air vents, which is frustrating as I find cabins are often too hot. And I did wake up cooking, although the friendly crew dropped the temperature and I got back to sleep. And of course, for me, there's something very important, a great view out of the window of the wing and the engine. Now one more thing to show you is the armrest, which folds up, making the bed slightly wider. An amenity kit was brought around, and I'll be giving that away to a subscriber with more details of that giveaway later in the video. Although, unfortunately, no pyjamas are offered on this flight. Noise cancelling headphones were also provided, 
and they can be stored on this rather odd looking um, thing. One slight criticism is that it would have been nice to have integrated a bottle holder as it was free to roll around during the flight, but otherwise I think it's a really good seat. A drink was offered and I sat back and awaited our departure. Now I really love this little bow and wave that the Japanese ground crew seem to do when all their aircraft leave. Now for reasons I don't really understand, the cabin lights were all left on. Therefore my view out the window was rather destroyed by, well, an unfortunate reflection as you can see. Feel free to close your eyes and listen to the engine spool up. In fact I'd encourage you for your sanity to close your eyes. I was a little cranky about the cabin lights being left on as takeoff is my favourite part of the journey and I couldn't see anything. Now in my experience they're always dimmed with the idea being that your eyes are already adjusted to dark in case of an emergency exit, although someone might be able to explain that this isn't the case in Japan. Anyway, bigger problems in the world and a wet towel was brought around. There's three toilets for business class passengers and they were perfectly reasonable and well equipped with the usual amenities. A round of drinks was offered. a and have a special wine list where they choose one premium wine and I went with this. On board tonight's flight was a Chardonnay from Washington State in the US which tasted fantastic. A big shout out to my American subscribers. You're the greatest country between Canada and Mexico and seriously have fantastic aviation museums. Seattle in particular is a must for any aviation geek. There was a Japanese or Western meal option and I went with the latter. I'll include the menus at the end of the video. I thought it tasted pretty good and it was washed down with some dairy drinks. After dinner, it was around midnight local time and the friendly flight attendant made up my bed. They place this air bubble filled mattress over my seat and it makes for a really comfortable place to sleep. I ended up watching a movie and had a nap. A few hours later, I was up and ready for breakfast. Since it was light outside, I finally got a good view at the Rolls Royce Trent 1000. The wing view in the Dreamliner is stunning and this particular aircraft was only two years old having been delivered to a and in mid-2016. Before I show you breakfast, I have to complain about these windows. While they are massive, as you can see in this footage I took just after we landed in Sydney, the electromagnetic dimming is infuriating. It doesn't completely block out direct sunlight, it takes ages to adjust, and for nerds like me who like to take photos out of the window, it blocks some of the colours. I had to use some iMovie magic to get these outside images remotely colourful. Hopefully they revert back to normal sunshades with the 777X. Anyway, a coffee and a reminder of the magic of flight put me in a better mood. A bigger breakfast was offered, although I don't usually eat much in the morning anyway. I gobbled that down and then sat back and watched TV. I should mention that Wi-Fi is available for a fee, although I didn't use it. I wouldn't be using it for important business and don't mind being isolated from social media for a few hours. But on the topic of that, make sure you check out my Instagram account for heaps of aviation photos such as these. Also search for me on Facebook. I'll also quickly mention the in-flight entertainment. As I said before, it's a touch screen, although you can use the handpiece if you really want to. 
The hardware is fine with good touch response and you move through the menus quickly. The actual English content was only okay, which I suppose isn't usually surprising being a Japanese airline. There was live TV, which is what I actually watched, and there's a good quality in-flight map. As I've said in previous videos, I love orientating myself with the map and then identifying sites 40,000 feet below you out the window. I'll conclude with my thoughts as we started our descent into Sydney's Charles Kingford Smith Airport. As I've said in previous videos, I pay for these flights, I'm not looking for favours from the airlines and I'm keen to be honest and impartial. If something is no good, you can be assured that I'll say so, although I always feel a little uncomfortable being unkind. Thankfully, this flight was great. I'll start with the service, which was really good. My primary flight attendant and the customer service manager both came and introduced themselves and addressed me by my name. They were also very keen to help and get my thoughts on the airline since it was my first flight with them. In fact, as a gift, they gave me some a and playing cards, key rings and stickers, which was a nice touch. The food and drink was also perfectly good. It was served and promptly removed, which was particularly appreciated since it was a late scheduled departure from Tokyo and I was keen to sleep. And that Chardonnay from Washington was really good too. The seat itself is perfectly comfortable with decent storage, privacy and easy aisle access. Although I still think that it would have been nice to integrate a bottle holder in somewhere as the ledge is otherwise quite large so you wouldn't miss a few square centimetres. The staggered design of the seats also allows for you to choose something more private versus easier aisle access. And of course if you're travelling with someone and you want to see them you can select middle seats. Apologies I didn't capture any footage of them as they were occupied by the time I got on board. Overall it was a really pleasant flight and I'd happily fly with a, &A again. Before I get to the menus, I'll mention the amenity kit giveaway, which includes a few other a, &A goodies. To enter, simply comment below with a, a amenity kit surrounded by brackets. I was previously using hashtags, but that confuses YouTube's search function. Full details of the giveaway are in the video description below, but essentially you've got 30 days from me uploading this video to enter, and I'll happily be shipping internationally. Now I'll just pause here and listen to the engines on landing. That's it from me, if you enjoyed the video be sure to click the thumbs up button and check out my channel for heaps more similar videos. Don't forget to find me on Instagram and Facebook as well. Thanks for watching, I'll see you another time and coming up are the menus.